I'll tell you about the cocktail party problem. So you've been to cocktail parties before, right? Where you, know, you can imagine there's a party, room full of people, all sitting around, all talking at the same time. And there are all these overlapping voices because everyone's talking at the same time. And it's almost hard to hear the person in front of you. So maybe you have a cocktail party with uh, two people, two people talking at the same time, and uh, a somewhat small cocktail party. And we're going to put two microphones in the room. So there are microphones. And because these microphones are at two different distances from the speakers, each microphone records a different combination of these two speakers' voices. Maybe speaker one is a little louder in microphone one, and maybe speaker two is a little bit louder in microphone two because you know, the two microphones are at different positions relative to the two speakers. Um, but uh, uh, each microphone records an overlapping combination of both speakers' voices. So here's an, here's an actual recording uh, of, of two speakers recorded by a researcher. Let me play for you the first, what the first microphone sounds like. All right, maybe not the most interesting cocktail party is uh, two people counting from one to ten in two languages, but you know, there you go. What you just heard was the first microphone recording. Here's the second recording. So what you can do is take these two microphone recordings and give them to an unsupervised learning algorithm called the cocktail party algorithm and tell the algorithm, find structure in this data for me. And what the algorithm will do is listen to these audio recordings and say, you know, it sounds like the two audio recordings that are being added together or that are being summed together to produce these recordings that we had. Moreover, what the cocktail party algorithm will do is separate out these two audio sources that were being added or being summed together to form our recordings. And in fact, here's the first output of the cocktail party algorithm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it separated out the English voice in, uh, one of his, in, in one of the recordings. And here's the second output. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, y diez. Not too bad. No. To give you one more example, here's another recording of another similar situation. Here's the first microphone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so the poor guy's gone home from the cocktail party and he's now sitting in the room by himself talking to his radio. Here's the second microphone recording. When you give these two microphone recordings to the same algorithm, what it does is again say, you know, it sounds like there are two audio sources and moreover, uh, the algorithm says, here is the first of the audio sources I found. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that wasn't perfect. It got the voice, but it also got a little bit of the music in there. Then here's the second output of the algorithm. Not too bad. In that second output, it managed to get rid of the voice entirely and just you know, cleaned up the music and got rid of the counting from 1 to 10. So you might look at an unsupervised learning algorithm like this and ask how complicated is it to implement this. Right? It seems like in order to, to you know, build this application, it seems like to do this audio processing, you need to write a ton of code or maybe link into a, like a bunch of C++ or Java libraries to process audio. It seems like a really, really complicated program to do this audio, separating out audio, and so on. Um, it turns out the algorithm to do what you just heard, that can be done with one line of code, shown right here. Uh, it did take researchers a long time to come up with this line of code, so I'm not saying this is an easy problem. But it turns out that when you use the right programming environment, many learning algorithms can be really short programs. So this is also why, in this class, we're going to use the Octave programming environment. Octave is free open source software, and using a tool like Octave or MATLAB, many learning algorithms become just a few lines of code to implement. 
later in this class, I'll also teach you a little bit about how to use Octave, and you'll be implementing some of these algorithms in Octave. Or if you have MATLAB, you can use that too. Turns out that in Silicon Valley, for a lot of machine learning algorithms, what we do is first prototype our software in Octave, because software like Octave makes it incredibly fast to implement these learning algorithms. Here, each of these functions, like for example, the SVD function, that stands for singular value decomposition, but that turns out to be a linear algebra routine that is just built into Octave. If you were trying to do this in C++ or Java, this would be many, many lines of code linking complex C++ or Java libraries. Um, so you can implement this stuff in C++ or Java or Python, but it's just much more complicated to, use, to do so in those languages. What I've seen after having taught machine learning for, almost, for about a decade now is that you learn much faster if you use Octave as your programming environment. And um, if you use Octave as your learning tool and as your prototyping tool, it will let you learn and prototype learning algorithms much more quickly. And in fact, what many people will do in the, the large Silicon Valley companies is in fact use an algorithm like Octave to first prototype the learning algorithm. And only after you've gotten it to work, well, then you migrate it to C++ or Java or whatever. Um, it turns out that by doing things this way, you can often get your algorithm to work much faster than if you were starting out in C++. So I know that as an, instru as an instructor, I get to say, trust me on this one, only a finite number of times. But for those of you who have never used these sort of octave type programming environments before, I'm going to ask you to trust me on this one and say that you, you will, I think your time will your developer time is one of the most valuable resources. And um, having seen lots of people do this, I think you as a machine learning researcher or machine learning developer will be much more productive if you learn this stuff and prototype this stuff in Octave and in some other language.